بعد العسر يسرا ربنا أعلاك قدرا يا إمام الأنبياء There are seven central characters in the play Pygmalion. Higgins is an authority on phonetics, described as a robust, vital, appetizing sort of man of 40 or thereabouts, and is an energetic, scientific type. He is also careless about people's feelings. This trait becomes most evident in his treatment of Eliza, whom he transforms from a flower girl into an upper-class lady. His inability to see and treat Eliza as anything more than an experiment forces her to take a stand for independence and self-respect. While Higgins remains fundamentally unchanged by the end of the play, he gains a new perspective on Eliza and views her with respect. Eliza Doolittle, also called Liza, is introduced as a dirty, shabbily dressed flower girl in need of a dentist. Her cockney accent places her in London's lower class, yet her intelligence and ambition allow her to aspire to something finer. In Higgins' laboratory, she is transformed into a lady who can pass for a duchess. Her real transformation comes with being treated like a lady and gaining self-respect. Colonel Pickering is the author of spoken Sanskrit and is a master of Indian dialects. He is an elderly gentleman of the amiable military type and throughout the play, he demonstrates a generous and courteous nature. He's kind to Eliza as she changes from a flower girl to a lady. Doolittle is described as an elderly but vigorous dustman. A happy member of the undeserving poor, he recklessly spends money he borrows from others. He has no morals at all and is willing to turn his daughter over to Higgins, no questions asked, for five pounds. Mrs. Higgins is a gracious member of the upper class. Her affection for Higgins does not shield her from irritation at his lack of manners, and she is adept at putting him in his place. Intelligent and perceptive, she soon discerns the problems that her son's experiment will cause for Eliza. Freddie is a young man and a member of the upper class, good-natured, though somewhat weak, and a true gentleman. He is infatuated with Eliza. At the end of the play, Eliza suggests that she might marry Freddie, though he has no money to support them both and may seem unfit for work. But he is devoted to her, unlike Higgins, and he won't try to make her something that she is not. Mrs. Pierce is Higgins' housekeeper. She has a strong sense of propriety and takes it upon herself to be sure that Eliza is cared for properly while in the house. A bond between Eliza and Mrs. Pierce grows, and Mrs. Pierce frequently pushes Higgins to show consideration for Eliza and to think about Eliza's future. In the introduction of the play Pygmalion, a sudden downpour has pedestrians in Covent Garden sprinting for shelter or taxis. Beneath the portico of St. Paul's Church, a young cockney flower girl, an older gentleman, and a man taking notes on the flower girl's speech are gathered. In the rising action, it becomes clear that the note-taking man is only interested in phonetically noting the flower girl's curbstone English. He boasts that he could teach her to speak like a duchess in three months. It turns out that he is the famous phonetician, Henry Higgins. The elderly gentleman is Colonel Pickering, an admirer and fellow speech expert. Higgins invites Pickering to come around the next day to his home on Wimple Street. The next morning, the flower girl, Eliza Doolittle, boldly shows up at Higgins' home, where she offers to pay him to teach her to talk more genteel. Pickering, who is present, says he will cover all expenses if, in six months, Higgins can pass Eliza off as a lady. Higgins accepts the bet and begins tutoring Eliza in speech and manners. Months later, Higgins takes Eliza on a surprise visit to his mother, an intelligent and dignified lady. It's a test of her newly learned skills. Eliza now looks and acts the part of a fine lady, but her vocabulary and unfortunate choice of topics gives away her humble beginnings. With some difficulty, Higgins covers her gaffes, 
while Freddie is smitten with Eliza. Overall, the test is a marginal success. Later, Mrs. Higgins scolds her son and Pickering both for treating Eliza like a doll, especially for not considering what will happen to Eliza when the experiment is over. Months later, after Eliza has honed her skills, Higgins and Pickering put Eliza's talents to the test, and she performs flawlessly. Back at the Wimple Street Laboratory, Higgins and Pickering congratulate themselves on their victory. With no thought of Eliza, they dismissively proclaim the experiment over. Higgins starts upstairs, but then returns to get his slippers and finds Eliza weeping with rage. In the play's climax, Eliza is enraged by Higgins' insensitivity. She won his bet for him, and now she thinks that he will toss her back into the gutter. The stormy scene ends with Higgins slamming the door and leaving. In the falling action, Higgins learns Eliza is, in fact, staying with his mother, who defends Eliza's choice to leave him and Pickering. A calm, composed Eliza comes downstairs and greets the men, thanking Pickering for treating her with respect <gasps> from the very beginning. But she says she no longer needs Higgins, and she will not come back. Higgins accuses her of ingratitude, but still holds out hopes for her return. In the resolution, Eliza leaves. Higgins remains unsure about whether or not she is gone for good. In Act One of Pygmalion, in Covent Garden, a district of London, a torrent of rain sends people hurrying for shelter under the portico of St. Paul's Church. Among them are a finely dressed lady and her daughter, who have been to the theater and now seek a taxi to take them home. Another is a man writing in a notebook. The lady's son, Freddie, rushes in, saying no cabs are available. Impatiently, his mother sends him back out to try again. As he sets off, he runs right into a dirty, disheveled girl selling flowers, sending her flower basket flying. He apologizes and dashes off, leaving her to pick up scattered flowers. Despite the objections of the lady's daughter, the lady pays the girl for the two bunches of ruined violets. Then, an elderly gentleman dressed in evening clothes hurries in out of the rain and pauses near the flower girl, who tries to sell him some flowers. He gives the girl three haypence, or half pennies, and walks off. A bystander warns the girl that there's a man eavesdropping and taking down her every word. He may be a detective. Panicked that she will be accused of soliciting for prostitution, the girl hysterically confronts the note taker, who dismisses her fear, saying, oh, shut up, shut up. Do I look like a policeman? Bystanders erupt in defense of the frightened girl, and things get a little hostile while the note taker begins identifying where various speakers come from based on their speech. But tensions ease when the note taker turns his trick on the elderly gentleman and then on the lady and her daughter. The note taker brags to the elderly gentleman that he could make a duchess of the flower girl by teaching her to speak properly. Then the rain stops and nearly everyone disperses. Only the elderly gentleman, note taker and flower girl remain. The men, it turns out, share a common interest in language and have been intending to seek each other out. The elderly gentleman is Colonel Pickering, a student of Indian dialects and the author of spoken Sanskrit. The gentleman is Professor Henry Higgins, author of Higgins' Universal Alphabet. Higgins invites Pickering around to his home the next day and the two men depart for a chat over some supper. Higgins tosses a handful of coins in the flower girl's basket as he leaves. It's a fortune by her standards. When Freddie pulls up in a taxi for his mother and sister, who have taken the bus, she takes it off his hands and heads home in style. Act One introduces the play's three main characters, establishes the central premise of the play, and provides social context In Act Two of Pygmalion, the next morning, Pickering visits Higgins at his home and laboratory on Wimple Street. As the professor drones on about the various devices he uses to study speech, his housekeeper, Mrs. Pierce, announces the arrival of a young woman. She is quite a common girl with a dreadful accent who insists on seeing Higgins. Immediately, he recognizes the flower girl from the night before and tells her to go away. But the flower girl, whose name is Eliza, 
stops him with the revelation that she has come for speech lessons and to pay for them too. Eliza aspires to become a lady in a flower shop, but says, they won't take me unless I can talk more genteel. She reminds Higgins of his claim that he could even teach her and offers him a shilling an hour to do so, a substantial sum for a person with her income. The challenge intrigues Higgins, and Pickering says he'll pay for the lessons if Higgins succeeds and count him the greatest teacher alive. Higgins accepts the wager, vowing in six months to make a duchess of this draggle-tailed gutter snipe. He tells Mrs. Pierce to find a room for Eliza to stay in, to give her a bath, burn her clothes, and order new garments. Mrs. Pierce chides Higgins Ooh. for thinking he can take a girl up like that as if you were picking up a pebble on a beach. When she tells Eliza to go home to her parents, Eliza confesses they have turned her out to earn her own living. While Eliza bathes, a man claiming to be Eliza's father visits Higgins and Pickering. He is Alfred Doolittle, a mean scoundrel who has come to ask Higgins for money in exchange for Eliza. Higgins is struck by Doolittle's natural gift of rhetoric and shocked by his lack of morals. Higgins gives the man money, and as he leaves, he encounters a young Japanese lady oh. in a blue kimono. <laughs> He is astonished to discover that she is actually Eliza, with the last word of advice to Higgins to take a strap to her if he wants her mind improved. Alfred Doolittle departs. Eliza is pleased to see her father go. Her new clothes arrive, <laughs> and in delight, she rushes to try them on. Higgins and Pickering can see that they have their work cut out for them. Act two sets up the experiment that will raise Eliza from low class to upper class. Higgins takes on the challenge of turning Eliza into a lady without thought of what it will mean to Eliza. The prospect fascinates him, and Pickering is similarly interested, though he views Eliza as a person and treats her kindly. He acts as a foil for Higgins. His respectful demeanor and consideration for Eliza counterbalances Higgins' rudeness and insensitivity. In Act Three of Pygmalion, the story moves to the elegantly furnished drawing room at the home of Higgins's mother. It's Mrs. Higgins's day for receiving visitors, and she is not pleased when her son bursts in without warning. He lacks social graces and tends to insult her guests. Higgins surprises her with news that he has asked a common flower girl whom he has taught to speak properly to come to see her. Her pronunciation is quite good, he explains, but she still needs to learn what to talk about. He hopes his mother can help. Mrs. Higgins's other guests arrive, and among them is the genteel lady from Act One who purchased the flowers spoiled by her son, Freddie. Freddie is also present, as is Pickering and the daughter of Mrs. Higgins. Pickering is the last to arrive before Eliza makes her entrance. Elegantly dressed, Eliza creates an impression of exceptional beauty and sophistication, perfectly articulating her greetings. As Mrs. Higgins later comments, hmm. Eliza is a triumph of her son's and her dressmaker's art. Eliza soon slips into an unsuitable family tale of a pinched straw hat, a suspected murder, and some gin drinking. Higgins passes it all off as the new small talk. Freddie, however, is captivated by her loveliness and odd ways. Once alone with Higgins and Pickering, Mrs. Higgins passes judgment on Eliza saying she's not presentable and reveals her low status. She chides both men for treating Eliza like a live doll. The result of teaching Eliza to look and sound like a fine lady will likely leave her caught between two worlds, one in which she still needs to earn a living, the other in which her new status disqualifies her from doing so. Both men completely miss the point. Then they leave with plans to take Eliza to a Shakespeare exhibition. Alone with her frustration, Mrs. Higgins cries out, Oh, men, men, men. Mrs. Higgins' home is the perfect setting for Eliza's big test. In her clothing and mannerisms, the flower girl has made great strides, especially her perfectly articulated speech. However, her choice of topic hardly matches either her exquisite appearance 
or language, especially her use of the word bloody, a word considered obscene in Shaw's time. Also, a relationship forms here between Freddy and Eliza. He is smitten with her beauty and unconventional ways. His adoration will become a source of comfort for Eliza and of irritation for Higgins. In Act 4 of Pygmalion, it's midnight and Eliza, Higgins, and Pickering are returning to Wimple Street after the successful final test of Eliza's skills. At home, complaining that he cannot find his slippers, he takes no notice when Eliza finds and places them before him and continues to sound off about the party. He's glad it's over and labels the whole experiment as a bore and simple purgatory. When Higgins and Pickering leave the room, Eliza burst into tears of rage. Moments later, Higgins returns, once more searching for his slippers, and she throws them at him with all her strength. She has won his bet for him, and now he has no more use for her. Higgins attempts to persuade her that she is tired and suffering from a case of nerves. She's now free and can do as she likes. Gradually, he understands that she has no idea what she is fit for or what will become of her. He clumsily suggests that she could find a rich man to marry who will take care of her, a solution Eliza rejects. Refusing to take the problem seriously, Higgins starts off for bed. He stops when Eliza quietly asks who her clothes belong to. She wants to know what she can take with her, as she doesn't want to be accused of stealing. She hands him the jewels he rented for her, along with the ring he bought her. She tells him she doesn't want the ring anymore. Dashing the ring into the fireplace, Higgins storms out and slams the door. In the morning, Eliza decides to visit Mrs. Higgins and ask her advice about what she should do. In this act, the evening success is the culmination of all Eliza and Higgins have worked to achieve. Yet the turning point in the play occurs after the victory. Eliza's months of tireless study and fine performance were a success but they go unacknowledged by Higgins and are barely touched upon by Pickering. The professor still sees Eliza merely as a way of proving his theory about language and his genius as a teacher. But that's not how Eliza feels. Angry and frustrated, she thinks Higgins has no further use for her and will abandon her, throwing her into the street just as her father and stepmother had done. She has had a taste of life as a lady and acquired all the necessary attributes. Her dreams have grown beyond merely working in a flower shop. Higgins has viewed Eliza as his creation, and he has imposed only superficial changes, language, clothing, and manners upon her. In Act 5 of Pygmalion, the next day, Mrs. Higgins is in her drawing room when the parlor maid announces that Higgins and Pickering are downstairs phoning the police about Eliza's disappearance. Mrs. Higgins sends the parlor maid upstairs, where Eliza has taken shelter, to tell Eliza to wait there until she is sent for. Mrs. Higgins chastises her son and Pickering for their thoughtless treatment of the girl but the arrival of Alfred Doolittle cuts the scolding huh? short. He enters dressed as a bridegroom in the height of fashion and in a highly agitated state and immediately accosts Higgins. Doolittle explains that Higgins' offhand remark in a letter to a rich gentleman has delivered him into the hands of middle-class morality. The gentleman died and left Alfred Doolittle a generous yearly pension. Now, his happy days are over as one of the undeserving poor. Mrs. Higgins reveals that Eliza is upstairs. Mrs. Higgins again reproaches her son and Pickering for their callous conduct the night before. Eliza enters, looking coolly self-possessed, and politely greets the two men. She thanks Pickering <gasps> for treating her well and showing her respect. Higgins' arrogant, ill-mannered reaction to this prompts Alfred to make his presence known to Eliza. After an awkward moment, she agrees to come along to see him married. For a few moments before leaving, Eliza and Higgins are left alone. Higgins tries to convince her that he did not treat her any differently from anyone else, that he treats everyone rudely, and then softens a bit and tells her that he will miss her 
if she leaves. Knowing Higgins will never change, Eliza hints that she may marry Freddie and support them both by teaching phonetics, possibly as an assistant to a rival of Higgins. Outraged, Higgins grabs her and threatens to wring her neck if she does. He sees something in Eliza that he has overlooked until now. Eliza is a tower of strength, a consort battleship. As the play closes, Eliza seems set on a path away from Higgins. But Higgins remains cheerfully confident that she will return to Wimple Street and continue to be part of his life. A play's resolution or denouement usually ties up all the loose plot threads and answers any lingering questions. But the question of Eliza's future is left unanswered. Eliza declares her independence from Higgins, says goodbye for the last time, and sweeps out of the room. Yet Higgins is confident that she will return. The resolution, then, is left up to audience members and depends upon their interpretation of events. The final act also raises a fresh question. Now that she is a lady, is Eliza really better off?